The liberal media tried to destroy Donald Trump. Instead, they destroyed their own credibility. Their extreme bias is provable. The network media's coverage of Mr. Trump was 91 percent negative, and 96 percent of campaign contributions from journalists went to Hillary Clinton. By a 10 to 1 ratio, the American people felt the media were trying to elect Mrs. Clinton. A Gallup poll found that the people's trust in the media has hit a record low. Welcome back to America Talks Live. If you have been with us here on Newsmax TV, uh, you may know that as a former member of Congress, the gentleman we just saw in the well of the House, Lamar Smith of Texas, is one of my favorite guys who happens to be serving in Washington. And I got there, brilliant man, I believe, at Yale Law School uh, and a guts up. Texas conservative, a guy who's always talked tough on the borders. In fact, the guy who I wanted to see become Speaker of the House instead of uh, John Boehner. Lamar told me, I don't want to do that job. He's the former chairman of the Judiciary Committee, and he's currently the chairman of the uh, Science, Space, and Technology Committee. And you heard him laying down the law in terms of media bias during this last election. Something we can talk about at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. Plenty to talk about, whether it's media bias, the Trump transition, what happened at the polls, what might be happening that ain't cool in terms of voter fraud. Joining us now, uh, the advisor to Donald Trump's National Diversity Coalition, a member of the Latino National Republican Coalition, Juan Pablo Andrade. Hey, Juan Pablo, it's good to have you. You heard my old pal you, Lamar JD. Smith laying down the law to the media there during that one minute in the well of the House. Since you're up there in New York, uh, I'm just kind of yes. curious, the, the media coverage and the cheerleading for Hillary, how obvious was it to you? Oh, it was not just to me, but it was 150% obvious to everybody. Since day one that President-elect Trump, uh, Trump announced his campaign back in June of last year, it's, like you said, it's been primarily negative media coverage for him and, you know, almost equally amount of media coverage for Hillary Clinton, but positive. So, you know, there was a complete bias in both, you know, radio, newspaper, and TV, of course. And of course, Juan Pablo, as there, as you join us there from Newsmax, New York, in the very busy newsroom there, we've got calls coming in at 1-877-NEWSMAX, 1-877-639-7629. Let's go not too far away from you, geographically speaking, over to Long Island. That's where Ian is watching the proceedings and on the telephone. Ian, welcome to America Talks Live. Thank you, Mr. Hayworth. Uh, 277, you called it first. That's right. And uh, now is a good time to let's get a final vote because you got Jerry Brown, Terry McCauley, you got these people that criminals. They were trying to rig the system. You got all these votes. People are pressing Trump, coming up Clinton in different states. I think a four million dead voters vote. And I think now's a good time. And we got time, you know, to go over this in the next couple of years for Trump to put somebody on going into each vote and finding who are these people that a vote and that shouldn't be that a push and it's like acorn did and to go after them and hold them criminally you know you're going to go get locked up because you people are playing games and trying to rig systems and just like this gentleman we saw through the media and i actually had to turn on the other stations to see if it was true so much because you don't want to believe you you what you only hear oh, so now, now wait now wait okay now just leak. just hang on just hang on ian because you start by saying we were watching you you were first but i understand it was like a dream because the the drumbeat had been so negative you were looking, it was kind of like what Reagan said, trust but verify. So you had to turn to make sure we were, we were dealing straight with you. Well, the good news is we were. And, and the better news, I think, Ian, is, is your suggestion that Mr. Trump have some sort of, uh, of ballot integrity study. Now, it's true that the elections are the domains of the states and the local municipalities, but there needs to be ballot integrity. And Ian, you are great to call with a suggestion and the kind word. And uh, let, let me talk to Juan Pablo about that. Ian talked about something else yes. uh, as he, he put a lot out there for us. And the whole notion of felons voting, 
For example, you know what, Mary, what very well might have put Hillary Clinton over the top in Virginia was Terry McAuliffe signing, what, individual pardons for over 60,000 felons? And now what's interesting, Juan Pablo, the dreamers, yes. the, the three quarters of a million people say they want President Obama to pardon them in terms of being brought to the country when they were little and against their will and all that. Do you think President Obama is going to pardon the quote unquote dreamers? You know, I honestly, I really don't think President Obama is going to do that. But if he did, I would not be surprised. Uh, you know, to those that are here, obviously illegally, but that are here uh, going to school, working, you know, want the same opportunities that everyone has been given. They don't have to worry with the Trump administration because many of the, especially in the Latino community, they're worrying. But those who are here, you know, in and out of jail every month, uh, dealing drugs on the street, not contributing to their community, those are the ones that are that the administration is going to focus on deporting. Let's go back to the phones right now at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. Down to the Peach State of Georgia, I believe it's uh, Dale on the phone. Actually, Gail, I'm sorry. Oh, Gail. that's okay. I've been called a lot worse. Well, we're just we're we're going to say we're happy to have you, Miss Gail. Welcome to the program. Anyway, I called a little earlier, and I just wanted to follow up on something that is constantly said about Mrs. Clinton uh, receiving the majority of the popular vote. Well, you know, when they talk about that, they're only talking about Mrs. Clinton's versus. Mr. Trump's votes, and there were two major third-party candidates as well as other candidates. And if you put um, those who didn't vote for for Mrs. Clinton, it's about 4.6 million dollars, uh, 4.6 million dollar votes more than those who actually did vote for her. So I don't know why, when they're comparing popular ver votes. They don't count all the other candidates. That that's a ran. that's a that's a point well taken. And of course, Gail, and it'd be good to get Juan Pablo to weigh in on this. And Gail, we thank you for the call. Yeah. The fact is, popular vote is interesting, and it, it helps to guide the electoral college. But our constitution is very clear: while there is a popular vote, that popular vote helps influence the electoral college. But is it is uh, the electoral college and electoral votes that decide the presidency in our constitutional republic. And I think the good thing is that after 2000, and again after this election, people understand the Constitution, they understand the importance of the electoral votes, and how it ensures that every state uh, gets the proper attention rather than the election just involving New York and California and Florida and uh, Illinois. Your take on that one, Pablo? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, the Electoral College is vital in it. You know, it's a shame that some members of Congress, especially the, you know, in the Democratic, uh, the Democratic caucus are trying to get rid of the Electoral College. You know, the Electoral College is here to make sure that, you know, the, the, like you said, those states that might not necessarily have a voice, if it wasn't there, uh, to make sure they do have a voice. So, you know, it's especially those states that, uh, that the candidates really hit hard when during the campaign season when they campaign there. Well, I'll tell you what, they were, they, they were hitting all the states, even Utah being up for grabs. A lot of times oh, yeah. our friends in the Beehive State says they say there's not much buzz about their campaign out there from a national level. That uh, was not the case this year. Let me turn now to the transition and the new Trump administration, Juan Pablo, again, as you join us from Newsmax, yes. New York. It's kind of an interesting dynamic at work. Chuck Schumer takes over in the Senate as the leader of the Democrats. Uh, there are stories out there that, hey, uh, the, Chuck Schumer says he's willing to work with President-elect Trump on key issues such as infrastructure, taxation, and trade. Do you think Chuck is being sincere about this, or is Schumer the kind of guy who's always playing the angles? We've got about a minute left, Juan Pablo. You know, I'm hoping he is being very sincere. Obviously, you could never know with the uh, the Democratic leadership right now in the Senate, but I'm hoping he is sincere, obviously, since it is not the campaign phase anymore. You know, we have President-elect uh, Trump for the next four or eight years. So, you know, he, he's even said it. We need to work with both, uh, on both sides of the aisle to make sure uh, that he gets done what he wants to get done. 
Let me ask you a personal question. 30 seconds remain after this campaign yes. where you were doing so much as a surrogate. Have you had a chance to rest yet? You've been able to rest up from this frantic campaign? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I got to rest about uh, three or four hours or so after Election Day. And then uh, the next, the, the day after Election Day, right back to Trump Towers to continue working. All right, now the real work begins. <laughs> hey, Juan Pablo Andrade, yes, today from Newsmax, New York. Juan Pablo, I know you're going to get back to work, and I hope you'll come back and see us again real soon. Thanks very much. Of course, thank you, JD. Coming up, should universities publicly declare support for illegal immigrants on their campus, not only as students, but as workers? We'll talk about that and more when we come back.